beginning at the ninth verse. Reading from the New King James translation, you will find these words. For this reason we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us unto the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. I've just read from Paul's epistle to the Colossians, the first chapter, the ninth through the fourteenth verses. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the word of God. We're going to ask Reverend King to lead us to the throne of grace. May we pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for being closed in our right mind. Father, we come praying for the bereaved and the sick and shit in, Father God. Realizing that if you were church, everything would be all right. Father, we ask you, oh Father God, just to shower us with your grace and your mercy. We thank you, oh Father God, that you don't do like we, that you don't look like, you don't act like me, but you love in spite of. Lord, we Thank you, oh, Father God. I'm not going to tell you to go to the hospital because you're already there. But somebody done called on you all night long. Somebody, Father God, need a comfort in a sick room. Somebody, Father God, just need a church from heaven. And Father, as you church, everything will be all right. Some mother done walked the floor all night long. Need to hear from her child. Lord, if you love him, uh, make him pick up the phone and call his mother. Somebody, Father God, done tossed and turned all night long. And early this morning, you rocked him to sleep. Father God, you want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your careful watch while death was all around our bedside. But Lord, you, it couldn't do us no harm because you had a wrap tied and fingered up in your grace. And Lord, we just want to thank you. We ask thee blessing in all of thy blessing. And the mighty Son of Jesus and the whole mother too says, Amen. On October 18th at 6 o'clock p.m., we will have our hybrid church conference. Uh, those that wish to come on out, just wear your mask. We ain't going to be long. Those who wish to log in on WebEx will be able to accommodate you. But there are some items that we need to bring before your attention. Uh, we're doing uh, the budget and ministry call for 2022. And we're asking all the ministries and auxiliaries uh, to think ahead. We ain't always be in the pandemic. We're not going to always be locked down. And I figure if uh, Walmart opens, and we ought to be open to. So we have work to do. We have lives to touch. So we're asking that you all start thinking of what God is going to do in our midst. Uh, we also need to bring before you some candidates for deacon. Uh, for 18 months, I know you all said, well, Reverend, we've been shut down. No, we've been here every Sunday. 
and uh, we have uh, completed the training uh, for our deacons and uh, we're ready to present them to you that we may lay hands on them that they may do the work that's set before us. We've been worked October 30th, uh, the Macon County Board of Education and the Macon County Minister's Council uh, will be participating in our annual uh, Harvest Festival. And it will be a drive-through event, and we are planning to uh, decorate and prepare a site that is the children and their parents drive through. And we're going to have a nice little scene in place. And we can give them a couple of pieces of candy or a piece of fruit or whatever. And uh, Sister Jackie Hicks has volunteered to spearhead that decoration. And if you all want to work with her on that, we ask that you please contact her uh, as we are preparing uh, to get all of this done. Uh, for the Harvest Festival on the 30th. Also, on the 31st, the Town Creek District Association, of which I am vice moderator, will be doing a Trump or Treat event at uh, the parking lot of Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, the Town Creek District uh, comprises many churches in the South Macon area. And we are providing an opportunity for uh, the children in the South Macon area. So uh, that will be on Sunday the 31st at 1 o'clock p.m. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment. Of you, I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy holy through. Anybody can attest to that.
But grace and mercy said, Oh no, 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 no. We've already paid the price. country in a car that they patched up that they picked up at the junkyard going somewhere to go race and invariably as they are journeying down the road in this automobile as old cars do something broke and they have to fix and repair patch up this car modify it, get it back on the road to get to their destination in the time that they have allocated. Now, you know, uh, when I was younger, I could I could probably get with that. In my old age, I just won't get to where I'm going. And I looked at that, and, and the Spirit uh, illuminated something to me. God has taken this vehicle that we have been comfortable with called the church, and He has put us in a really interesting journey and we are literally rebuilding this vehicle while we are driving it down the road. Amen. And we've had to make some modifications and some adjustments uh, and it's doing things that it was designed to do but we forgot that it was supposed to do it. Well, what are you saying, preacher? As we are rebuilding the church, not redefining the mission, not changing the destination, but we are refocusing on the work that God has put before us, it has been a challenge. We're having to look at our traditions and the things that we were comfortable with and asking the question, do we really need to do that? Or can we do this a little more effectively or efficiently? 
most importantly, what is it that God will have us to do? In the book of Colossians, uh, Paul wrote this, <clears throat> this epistle to the church at Colossae. And, and I, I want to tag two of the verses that I read in your hearing, verses 9 and 10. And it reads from the King James translation, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's a lot in two verses. I want to speak this morning from the topic, Seeking God's Guidance. Seeking God's guidance. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory and we praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for keeping us in one of the most volatile experiences that many of us have ever seen. You protected us. You brought us. You put a hedge around us and you brought us safely thus far. At the same time, you reminded us that we have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Now, Lord, as you have given me this opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk to break the bread of life, I acknowledge I am not worthy, but all that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I surrender to you. Lord, have your way. Let your word go forth. Let your name be glorified. Let your people be edified that we may do good works to your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things that we kind of take for granted is that God's guidance is available. And we ought to trust it. Yet, even though it is available to us, um, we don't always take advantage of it. Well, why is that, preacher? Because, just as Jesus said, knock, and it shall be answered, seek, and ye shall find. We have to go after God's wisdom in order to be the people that God intends for us to be. We, 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 we ought to seek God's guidance, but as, as Paul said to the church at Colossae, it's important that you seek God's guidance for this reason. There's so much information out there available to you that there are so many things that sound good and look good, and we think they ought to be good, but it's not exactly what God has declared is good. And if we're not careful in this process of rebuilding this running vehicle, that we may end up putting some stuff in there that God didn't intend to be there. We have to be careful that we don't allow doctrines that will conflict in what God's will really is. So I know the question in your mind is, well, how do we know what God's will really is? And, and I'm glad you asked that question because there are three uh, major practices, three, three questions or, or three things that we ought to be looking for as we seek God's will. The first thing is, uh, when, when, when Paul says, I pray for you that the church be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Now see, we can have religious knowledge and, and we can have worldly knowledge, 
but that doesn't always coincide with God's will. They don't necessarily connect. And, and, and they're not always synonymous. And, 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 and we have to understand that religious knowledge sometimes conflicts with what God would have us to do. Wait a minute, preacher. I don't understand what he's saying. There are some things that we do in religion that we do religiously that doesn't necessarily reflect positively on what God would do through us. Wait, 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 I need some clarity on that. What do you mean by that? The Barna group, which uh, their group that just does surveys on Christian life in America and the world, one of the things that the Barna group has kicked in over the past 18 months, they wanted to measure where people were spiritually. And they found something that, 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 that really gave me a reason to pause. The statistics are showing that people are more spiritual than they've ever been. They, they acknowledge that there's something going on out there that they do not quite understand and, and they want to connect with it. But they were also asked, well, what about the church? And the majority of folks answered back that they didn't want to be bothered with the church. And what troubled me was, how is it that people claim to be spiritual, but yet they don't want to be bothered with the church. I have my opinions, In my opinion, one of the reasons that people don't want to be bothered with the church is that the church has left its primary mandate of making disciples and preaching the gospel and uh, they started getting political. Come on with it, though. Yes, sir. It started a few years ago when, when, when there were some evangelical preachers that said, if, if you are a Christian, you vote Republican. Mm. Wait a minute. Oh, I, I didn't know that you had to be uh, in a certain political party to be connected with God. And as we have seen culminating in the uh, events of recent, recent history that the church, the evangelical church, and I know a lot of folks say, well, that's, 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 that's them. No, people paint church and they see all of us and paint all of us with the same brush and what they see is a group of folks who aren't really representing who God is. Therefore, I need to go find God for myself. And in the places that they're looking, uh, they're connecting with some spirits, but they ain't necessarily holy. Paul wanted the church at Colossae, and, and I believe he is speaking to us today as we are dealing with this situation. Don't be seduced to bring in the stuff that everybody else is doing in the event or in the, 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 the thought that we can include all of that and then we get uh, distracted from what our mandate really is. We've gotten to the point where we have used the wrong rubrics to measure our effectiveness. We measure the effectiveness of a church by the number of people on the road, by how much money comes in, how many events or activities are taking place. But the one that the Lord is looking at, did you do what I told you to do? Did you make disciples? Did you feed the hungry? Did you clothe the naked? And did you give sight to the blind? And then did you tell them about my son Jesus? Well, we have to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. I'm going to be quick with 
There's three things, or a few things I want to leave with you about that. First of all, God's ultimate will is that thing which is irresistible, unconditional, and inevitable. And regardless of how we respond, God's plan will unfold. There's some things we can't stop. We can't stop the sun from coming up. God got that. We can predict when it'll come through, but we can't stop no hurricanes. God got that. That's his ultimate will. Then we have God's intentional will. And, and, and his intentional will is the plan for our lives that's determined by our choices. If we make some bad choices, that we end up in a place uh, that he may not intend it for us to go, but he will allow us to go and he's still going to get some glory out of it. See, we get to choose whether we're going to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, but we also choose the degree of our development and God's desire that all people be saved. It's choice. God's intent is for everybody to be saved. It's our choice on whether we're saved or not. That is God's intentional will. Then you have God's permissive will. And see, and, and that's if we can choose to disregard everything that God said. We can choose to do our own thing. And God can permit circumstances to occur that might be used to discipline us, might be used to open our eyes, might be used to direct us where he would have us to go. When I was a boy, I, I always thought that you had to, to be half dead to be called to preach. Because that's all, that's all the preachers preach. Oh, I, I was on my deathbed in the Lord. Raise me up, and I said, Lord, if you raise me up, I'll preach. Well, it made me think, well, I ain't half dead, so maybe I ain't supposed to be preaching. That was God's permissive will. He permitted some things to happen in the hope that it would uh, turn you in the direction you need to go. Paul said, my prayer is that you will be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Second thing that Paul said, he prayed that the church function in the practice of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. See, when we know God's will, it ought to give us some wisdom. You know, we, we, it ought to give us some perception of, of spiritual values and goals that, that make his will primary in our lives. And, and seeing that knowledge also leads us to some spiritual understanding. And in other words, we apply those principles to our daily living. You know, but, 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 but the, the, the problem is... Uh, many of the practices of God's will do not seem to have a chapter and verse from the Bible as a point of reference. And, uh, and uh, rather, uh, we, we stay in the truth by applying biblical principles that express wisdom and spiritual understanding. What are you saying, preacher? Well, the Bible isn't a direct uh, guide uh, uh, like an auto repair manual, fix this, fix this, and fix this. But we are given the principles and we ought to be able to deduce that there are some things that God will have done. In other words, when we pray, Lord, uh, 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 heal uh, so-and-so who, who's sick in the hospital, we shouldn't have to say, if it be thy will. Because we know it's God's will that everybody be whole. It's God's will that nobody be lost. Therefore, I shouldn't be praying, Lord, save the world if it's your will. We know that's his will. So, so if, 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 if we're doing this, then, then we have to understand that, that there's some things uh, with, with my conduct that I ought to be checking to make sure it lines up with God's will. 
five things that we need to be asking ourselves in our day-to-day -day walk. See, before we do anything, we need to be asking the question, will it bring glory to God? Second thing we need to ask before we do something, will it lead me into temptation? Third thing we need to ask, if I do this, will it enslave me? Will I get so wrapped up into this that I can't do nothing else? Number four, will this defile my body? Because if I defile this temple of the Holy Spirit, I, my ministry would be compromised. I won't be able to do all that I need to do because my body has been defiled. The fifth thing, will it damage my influence on others? If I do this, will somebody else be caused to stumble? Will it cause somebody else to fall if I do this thing? Paul said, if, if eating meat offered to an idol caused my brother to stumble, then I won't eat the meat. Not whether it's right or wrong to eat the meat, not whether that meat is defiled or not, but if it caused my brother to stumble, then, then I'm doing harm to him, even though I got the right to do what I want to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the last thing, if I do this, does it create doubt about doing the will of God in my life? If, if I do this, will, will, will it cause doubt? As, as, as Romans 14 and 23 says, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And if we seek the highest wisdom and spiritual understanding, we can know God's will and practice it. I want to be the best me that I can be. See, Paul prayed that the church be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Paul prayed that the church function in the practice of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And then the final thing, Paul said he prayed that the church focus fully on pleasing the Lord by being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, this, this isn't something that you check off the box and, all right, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, all right, I'm there. No, but it's something that we do daily. I want to please the Lord. I want the Lord to be happy. Not what I want. Father, what do you want through me? Father, I may not like where I'm at. I may not be in the situation that I think I ought to be in. But if I'm here, am I giving you joy? If, if I'm in this situation, is my lifestyle such that people will look at me and say, that's one of God's children? Am I pleasing you? See, we, 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 we want to please people, especially if they are important to us, especially if we love them. I want my wife to be pleased. I want her to have everything that she needs. I want her to be secure and and, and the knowledge that, 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 that her husband loves her. I want my children to know that well, no matter what you do or wherever you go, I'm going to love you. They need to know. Now, if, if I'm doing that for my children, yeah. what about my love for God? Well, Lord, if I love you, am I doing that which you're proud of? Am I doing that which you can take joy in? Am I doing the thing? That, 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 that bring you glory. Amen. You know, we often talk about peer pressure on young folk, and everybody wants to be accepted by their, their, their associates and their friends. I'm convinced that peer pressure don't stop once you leave puberty. Grown folks still deal with peer pressure, yes. but 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 if 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 if, if we are, are, are dealing with this with people, 
uh, with our day-to-day -day activity because we want to be acceptable to people, what about our acceptability to God? Am I pleasing to him? Am I doing what he would have me to do? Or am I doing what's convenient? There was a, a, a young man that had just finished seminary and, and he graduated at the top of his class and, and he was one of, one of the denominational bright stars and, and he had accepted an appointment to go on the foreign mission field. And one of his professors came to him and said, wait a minute, man, with your grades and your standing, you can, you, there's a lot of work that can be done around here. You can pass them on these big churches around here. You, I mean, you could be living large. You can get one of them churches where they, they really take care of you. And he said, yeah, that's well and fine, but I have to ask the question, is that what the Lord would have me do? Would he be pleased with me doing this when he asked me to do that? I want to please him. In my old age, I, mean, I know y'all folk don't like to talk about being old. I'm glad I'm old. Because see, there are a whole bunch of folk that I grew up with didn't make it to 35. I'm thankful for every day that the Lord sent because he didn't have to do it. And when I think about what God has done for me, every day that he sends, because I look back at some stuff I could have done and should have done and didn't do, and now when he gives me an opportunity to do something, Lord, if I could just break that, I, I, I can't make up for what I didn't do, but right now, what can I do to be pleasing to you? I can't go back and catch that water that then already went under the bridge. But as for right now, Lord, what can I do to be the best that you would have me to be? Yeah, I, I probably could have been a better husband. I probably could have been a better pastor. I probably could have been a better father. But as for right now, Lord, how can I be pleasing to you? We all struggle with it. I venture to say Jesus struggled with it. Wait a minute, Jesus was tempted in all things and sin not. Yeah, that's true. He was tempted, but he was in the garden one night praying, Father, ain't there another way we can do this? Do I have to drink from this cup? Can we do this another way? And as he prayed, the Bible said he prayed to sweat rolled down like drops of blood. But then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. You know, we look at that part and say, oh, Jesus was all that. We, we overlooked that part that he prayed three times. He prayed, got up, walked away, come back, prayed some more, got up and walked away and come back and finally said, Father, if there's no other way we can do this, it's not my will, but thy will be done. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what challenges I'm going to face. But you know what? I want to be pleasing in his sight. I don't know where I have to endure. I don't know what hardship will come my way. But I pray that when the time comes that I'll be pleasing in his sight. I don't know about what the impact will be or what the circumstances will fall. All I know is that I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear him say, come on in to your reward. I want to hear him say, this is my son in whom I well please. I want to please him. It is our challenge as we are restructuring the church. And I know some folks say, Reverend, it just sounds so worldly. Well, you know, and maybe I could find a better, better uh, descriptor. But we are restructuring. We're changing the way we do a lot of things. 
It ain't that comfortable. Hmm. But out of necessity, we've had to make some adjustments. So many folks say, well, we want to go back. Hmm. We want to go back to normal. But see, that's making an assumption that normal was right. Believe me, there's some stuff I don't want to go back to. There's some stuff that I believe has been more of a hindrance to the church than a help. And in my opinion, we would be fools to pick some of that stuff up after it has been stripped away from us. It's time to move on. And, and, and there's some things I, 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 I'll admit that, 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 that um, I ain't particularly comfortable with, but I know out of necessity there are things that we need to do. Because we got to charge. We've been charged to preach the gospel to the entire world. And I know some folks say, well, how are we going to do that, me and Tuskegee? the Lord sends a pandemic and allows little old preachers like me to preach to hundreds of people. You know, I, I remember going to a funeral one time and, and uh, I thought that preacher never would let go. Because he kept saying, Sister so-and-so did something I'm unable to do. She's packed the house, and I'm going to take advantage of He preached, and he preached. I mean, he had about six months worth of sermons he preached that day. And I'm thinking to myself, brother, you preached that long. I see why you don't pack the house. Because our mindset was, if you're a good preacher, you'll pack the house. You'll, you'll slay them in the pews. And what did the Lord do? He gave us 18 months to preach the empty pews. If you got something to say, folks, are here. We had to make some changes. Yes, I, I, I missed you at the affirmations and, 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 and the feedback, you know. And, uh, but, you know, we got to make that adjustment. Most importantly, we have to look at what's really important. That we may be pleasing to the Father. Because He's been so good. He's been merciful. And I just want to give Him thanks. Let us pray. Let us meditate on these things as we become the church that he intended for us to be. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have charged us to baptize and make disciples to equip the saints to do the work of ministry so that your name will be glorified. So that a hopeless world would have hope and know that that hope is in Jesus Christ. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the grace and mercy that you have given us to allow us to make the adjustment Oh, we give you glory. We praise, honor, and magnify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper. It is our tradition that we do this on first Sunday. And... When the first century church did it, 
They did it because Jesus said, when you come together, it wasn't about the bread and the wine, but it was to remember what he did in order for us to be reconciled to the Father. In the Gospel according to Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning at the 26th verse, you'll find these words. And as they were eating, the Lord took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Afterwards, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us turn our hearts and minds toward Calvary. And the price that Jesus paid so that we may be reconciled to the Father. O oh Lord, search us. Try us mold us and shape us to be the people that you have created us to be. Lord, as we think about where you have brought us from and how you have kept us and how you have blessed us, we thank you. But most importantly, we thank you that 2,000 years ago you sent your son to bear the sins of the world, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, bless this bread and this wine that we're about to receive. Let us never forget that Jesus paid it all. Bless the deacons who will carry this bread and wine to your people. Wash their hands, cleanse their hearts. Realizing, Lord, that Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. his hands 
I had no more strength to stand. Oh, and lo and behold, blessings fell on me. And as far as I can see, thank God it's a miracle. It's a miracle that I'm here. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's a miracle that I made. It's a miracle that I'm here. I've been through so much. The living seem very drear. Yes, I've been through a storm. There is no need to mourn. Thank God it's a miracle. A miracle. Thank God it's a miracle. Yeah. Thank God it's a miracle. A miracle that I feel. Sang a hymn, and they went out to the Mount of Olives. 